And welcome to our last Hawkeye Lunch and Learn for this particular semester. And I want you to know that registration is now open for the 2017 events and would encourage you to visit the Hawkeye Lunch and Learn website for any additional information that you might need. Today, we're excited to welcome Dr. Liz Tovar, and she has served as the Associate Athletic Director for Student Athletic Academic Services for the University of Iowa since 2013. And following today's lecture, there's something that's uh, of an addition uh, being um, added on to what we normally do. Um, she is willing to provide a tour of the Jardine Athletic Learning Center. So if you would like to participate in that, um, you can go to uh, the table that's just outside the door you came in, and uh, there will uh, be people at the table who can help direct you to uh, where to go. So let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Tolver. She um, has done a great deal of work in terms of supervising daily operations within academic services. And she manages the academic and personal support services for student athletics across all 24 UI sports programs. She also serves on the UI athletics senior management team. She serves on numerous campus committees and oversees diversity educational efforts for student athletes. Dr. Tolver earned three degrees, actually from the University of Kansas, her bachelor's in psychology, her master's in clinical psychology, and her PhD in educational leadership and policy studies. And she then had an emphasis on higher education administration and a, ma a minor in counseling psychology. She began her career in 1998, and she has worked with student athletics at the University of Kansas, Ohio State University, and Northern Illinois University. So if you would please today make welcome Dr. Liz Tover. Well, thank you so much, Linda. It is such an honor to be here today, and I'm proud to see so many folks uh, taking time out of your busy schedules to be here and to hopefully learn something about myself and our department and, and what we do uh, over in UI Athletics. I also wanted to give a special thank you to Jade, uh, who helped to organize this event today. She's done a tremendous job, and we've been in communication since last fall, actually, and time flies when you're having fun. I thought, oh, May, uh, th that's a long way away, but it's it's here and it's upon us. So um, anyway, thank you all. I really appreciate you being here today. This is a busy time of year for us uh, in UI athletics. Um, you know, we co constantly hear about, well, we have our football season and we have our track season. Well, this is what I refer to as our banquet season, okay? And I'm sure many of you in here can, can relate to that. You're constantly going to banquets and recognition ceremonies, uh, which are fabulous. And, you know, it's one of the things that I, that I enjoy the most. And one of the reasons for that is because we're really able to recognize the achievements of our student athletes um, in our athletics department. So I'm going to spend a little time today. Um, when graduate, do it right. That's the name of uh, this particular presentation. And I have an agenda. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of my duties and responsibilities and our office and how we're organized. Uh, but I'm also going to focus in on some of the wins that we've had this year within uh, UI athletics. Um, but the majority of my time, I'll probably spend on the graduate part of it because that's my area and that's my, my passion. And then finally, we'll talk about um, doing it right and what do we really mean by that um, i have to say that i actually stole this phrase from our athletic director gary barda uh, who i have a lot of respect for he coined this phrase a few years ago uh, but i really think that it gets to the essence and the core of who we are in ui athletics and then finally i've added a slide about how you and the audience and the community can help support us as well 
So some of my duties and responsibilities, as, Lin as Linda mentioned, is to oversee our academic support services office over in the Jardine Athletic Learning Center. We have 11 full-time staff members, including myself. We have about another 60 to 70 uh, support staff members, such as tutors and student workers and individuals who work with our student athletes on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I also help to coordinate uh, many of the programs um, and services for our students athletes that we'll talk about a little bit later but most importantly I love getting involved in the community and on campus uh, for example I serve on several committees through the presidential committee on athletics which are which is our faculty oversight committee. Um, and they look at things like student athlete equity, student athlete well-being, and also academic support. And my goal is to really advise faculty on how we're doing and also let them know what support we need from this campus in order to help our student athletes be successful. So I really enjoy that. Um, I also work very closely with the Iowa Link program, um, as well as the Office of the Registrar. And I also have an indirect reporting line to the uh, provost office as well. I have an indirect report line to the vice provost for undergraduate education, Lon Moeller. Um, finally, I also help to oversee and make sure that student athletes are having a good experience on campus. Every single year we survey our student athletes and we ask for their feedback on all the different areas within our department. Um, and so I spearhead that effort and I ask them, you know, how how were your academic services that, that, that you received? Um, how are things going in your particular sports team? Um, all of the services that student athletes are provided here, it's really important that we know and understand what their experience is like. Um, we wanna know the good things, but we also wanna know the areas that we need to improve upon as well. So here's uh, an example of our organizational chart. Um, as you can see at the top, I have a direct report line to the Director of Athletics, as well as, as I mentioned before, uh, Lon Moeller, our Associate Provost for Undergraduate Education. Um, and under me are my wonderful staff, and I am very fortunate to work with some of the best people in the business. Um, there are five key areas within our department, and I'm gonna go through these um, and talk a little bit about each one. We have an Associate Director for Operations operations and events, and one of her uh, main jobs is to help put on all of the uh, probably a hundred or some odd activities and programs that we have throughout the course of the year. Um, we also have an associate director for advising and eligibility. Uh, this person's role is to monitor how student athletes are doing in the classroom, but most importantly, are they eligible to get on the practice field day after day? I also have um, uh, a director for retention as well. Um, and this person's job is to oversee our tutoring program, but also making sure that we're helping our student athletes uh, who may be struggling in the classroom and making sure that they get all the services that they need, not only from our office, but that they know what resources are available on campus as well. We also have a great administrative support services staff, and I couldn't do what I do every day without the help and support from them. One person who is not on here, um, who is fairly new to our office, is our career specialist, who we just hired uh, back in August of last year. One of the areas that our student athletes said that they needed more help and assistance in um, is in terms of career development. We have a wonderful Pomerantz Career Center here on campus, which our student athletes interact with every day. But what our student athletes said to us is they said, you know, we need that person who's right there within your office who I can stop in, have someone look over my resume, maybe talk to them about my career and what I want to do for the rest of my life. Because as we all know, student athletes at some point in time, their sport time will end for them. And they need to be able to go out there and to the world of work um, and to have a good productive life. So we hired a career specialist and one of the neat things about her position is that she partners with the Pomerantz Career Center. This past fall we had a networking night for student athletes um, and we brought employers to campus um, and it was a great, um, great example of a partnership between our office and campus and what we could do for our students. And we had a great student athlete turnout and it's something that we'll probably do in the future. We also have a number of individuals who are help supporting um, 
who serve as academic coordinators. Pretty much every single person on our staff, uh, including myself actually, has a caseload of student athletes that they work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we also have a tutor and retention coordinator as well. So we have a person that places our students with tutors uh, within our office. Um, and then finally, our tutors, who we uh, really rely on heavily as well. Um, we probably have about 50 tutors uh, who are in our office and they provide tutoring support um, in all different subject areas. And if we can't find a student, a tutor, uh, we really rely on our Tutor Iowa program that, that we have here on campus as well. So that's our organizational structure. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of background about who we are and what we do. So when? I am so pleased to say that we have had probably one of the best years within UI athletics ever. I'm not gonna go through this entire list at all, but just to name some of the highlights. Um, you know, our football team had a, had a tremendous year. Um, it's the 14th time in the last 16 seasons that our football program has gone to, or has made um, a postseason appearance. Um, our men's basketball program, a few of you in here have probably heard of Peter Jock. He had a lot of accolades this past year. Um, senior class award whatnot. Our volleyball program is on the rise, I'm so pleased to say. Uh, we had the first winning record since 2000, which is unbelievable. Um, women's basketball program, Allie Disterhoff, she's one of my favorite students I've ever met, and I'm going to brag about her today. Uh, she's t twice twice. She received Academic All-American of the Year honors, which is no small feat. And women's gymnastics, we had our head coach of the year, won the head coach of the year award for them. And then in the sport of wrestling, we had five All-Americans and then one NCAA title winner. So those are just a few of the areas that we've really been really great at uh, this past year. Um, I will say that every single year I take time out to try and travel with some of our sports teams. And it teaches me a lot about what it's like to be a student athlete because I have to tell you, I was not a student athlete in college at all. Um, and I'll give you a great example. This past year, our men's basketball program traveled to Maryland, actually. Um, and I said, you know, I, I, I want to go. I want to see not just about going to the game, but also to be able to be around our student athletes outside of the academic realm and get to know them. You know, we left on, I think it was like a, a Friday afternoon. Um, we flew into Maryland, got in at like 10 o'clock at night, checked into the hotel. The players were up first thing in the morning, going to practice, going to eat, meeting, played a game. We were back into town that following evening by midnight. I mean, think about that. Um, I mean, think about what it's like to not just have to go out and compete in a game, but also think about what student athletes have going on outside of their sports, academics being one of them, right? Um, and it told me that, you know, this is just one game that I went to. They have to do this consistently throughout the course of the week. And quite frankly, it's, it's tiring. And, and our student athletes, one of the things that we work with them on is time management and organization. Because if there's one area that our uh, student athletes across the board, not just here at Iowa, say that, man, I, I have a lot of difficulty with, it's with that time management and organizational piece. So they're very fortunate to have our office as a great resource, people who are looking out for what's in their best interest and hopefully helping them succeed at the end of the day. So graduate, this is the area I love. Um, we had a lot of success uh, in the classroom this past year. Uh, for example, we had a 90% graduation success rate, which was an all-time high uh, in UI athletics. 90% um, is not an easy number to achieve, um, but as I go into more detail about what we do within our office, you'll, you'll see that that comes as no surprise. Um, we had several teams who had a perfect graduation success rate score about seven teams we also had two teams women's golf and field hockey who for the past seven years have had a perfect GSR score okay um, and then finally we had three teams that earned a perfect federal graduation rate so not doing too badly in the classroom 
you know, one of my jobs is to also look at um, not just how well our students are doing, but how do we compare within our conference and also nationally. Um, I'm pleased to say that we're higher than the national average in terms of both our graduation success rate and our federal graduation rate. We are the second highest uh, GSR in the Big Ten Conference. I think we're tied with two other schools, Minnesota and Michigan. Um, we also had several teams that, one thing that we look at, and this is outlined in our strategic plan, is how are our sports teams, how do they compare nationally within their particular sport? And we had 16 teams at or above the national GSR across all Division I student athletes. That's pretty tremendous. One of the reasons why I think that we are so successful um, comes down to a few factors. Number one, my staff. Um, I heavily rely on them. My goal is to go out and hire the best people who care about student athletes, who are ethical people, who are going to do things the right way for us um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So a lot of what we do in our office comes down to the relationships that we build with our 650 student athletes. But the other reason why I think we're successful is that student athletes know that they have a place on campus just for them to come. And that place is the Jardine Athletic Learning Center. We have about 28,000 square feet uh, within our building across three floors. Hopefully everyone in the room can come over and, and see our building today. Um, but it's very multifaceted. Um, we have uh, room for tutoring. We have room for collaboration. We even have a refueling station. So we know student athletes get hungry and stay hungry a lot of the time. So we have food over, over there for them that they can pick up at any time. Uh, we also most importantly, we're getting ready to renovate our building, which we are very excited about. We have a beautiful building. The Jardine Center is probably about 12 years old, but what's changed over that 12 year period of time uh, is technology, cell phones, right? Computers, all of that, that's changed dramatically. Um, also, our students' study habits have changed. The types of environments that they like to study in has changed dramatically. It used to be way back in the day that we would tell student athletes, hey, come in to this room, sit down at a table, study, and you'll be just fine. Well, st every student athlete is completely different, just like the general student population. Um, and so what we did was we looked around campus and we looked at environments that we thought, you know what, this is an environment that we want over in the Jardine Center. The library is a great example of that. So we made some visits and what do you know, we are going to be renovating our, bu our building within the next year or so. So we're truly, truly excited about that. Um, graduate, okay, advising, tutoring, and student development. This really comprises the three areas of our office, and I'm gonna talk about each one of these individually. Um, every single student athlete within our office is assigned to an academic coordinator who is in charge of their sports team. Every single freshman student athlete is required to have mandatory contact hours with our office every single week, and that can mean appointments with their academic coordinator who sits down with them and says, how are things going this week? Week. I know you have a test coming up, or do you feel prepared for that particular test? So they're really tracking and monitoring everything that our student athletes are doing. But we also want to make sure that our student athletes are also meeting with their academic advisor on campus as well. So a part of our job is to meet with students, but to also make sure that we're communicating with that campus advisor to help keep that student on track for graduation. The thing that we don't want is for our student athletes to be taking courses that don't go towards graduation. And also our job is to make sure that they are um, following NCAA and Big Ten standards um, and that they're meeting the benchmarks that they have to meet every single semester. We also have a fabulous tutoring program. We provide in individual and group tutoring. Um, our retention program um, is a program that we've had for several years now, and it's designed for student athletes who either one, have come to campus and said, you know what, I learned a little differently than some of my uh, other student athlete peers. Maybe they received accommodations in, in high school. Our job is to make sure that those students get the resources and help that they need here on campus. And then we 
we also have a structured study program where our student athletes are required to come in every single week and get in a certain number of hours. Those study hours can include one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Those study hours can include meeting with a professor on campus, um, but it can also mean just independent study time on their own. What we want our student athletes to do is to form good habits starting in their freshman year. Um, and every student is different in terms of what works best for them. So we try and curtail um, a plan for every single student athlete that comes through our door. The final area is probably one of our most important areas, and that's the student development area. That's everything that's outside of the classroom, everything that's outside of their sport. How do we develop students so that by the time that they graduate from the University of Iowa, that they're prepared for the world of work? Um, there is nothing more important to me than for a student athlete to leave here, to know what they're doing, to have a job lined up, to be able to go on to graduate school and to know what they are doing. And that's no small feat, I can tell you that much right now. Um, but also through our student development program, we recognize a lot of student athletes. We wanna compliment them on all the great things that they're doing within academics. Um, and then we also have a lot of student athlete programming that we put on throughout the course of the year as well. So advisement, let me talk a little bit about this. Um, a lot of individuals ask, you know, why do you need two different advisors on, on campus? You know, we really see ourselves as specialists within the areas of NCAA, progress towards degree, and eligibility, which means that we have to work very closely with our registrar's office, with our athletic compliance office to make sure that we know and understand the rules and regulations, but then also that the student athletes understand what those rules and regulations are. We rely very heavily on uh, monitoring our student athletes and we couldn't do that without the help of our faculty and staff on campus. So for example, four times during the semester we will contact every single professor for every single student athlete and we will ask them how that student athlete is performing in class. And believe it or not, our students, they're like, you know what, our instructors know who we are in class. <laughs> they know when they're in class, they know if they're paying attention, and all of that information comes back to our office and we talk to the student athletes, um, especially if there's an issue in class. Um, but fortunately, we have great faculty and staff on this campus and it's probably one of the best campuses I've ever worked on in terms of faculty um, corresponding with us being a real support system for us. We cannot do it without them. We also want to make sure that we communicate with coaches, which is a part of our job. Um, just to give you yeah, a, a great example, one of the sports teams that I work with is, is football. We have three academic coordinators who are assigned to the sport of football. We go over weekly and we meet with every single coach within the sport of football. And we talk about every single student athlete just about in the sport of football from an academic standpoint. That communication is key for us because not only do the student athletes need to know where, th where they stand, but coaches have a very high standard here at the University of Iowa, one in which I'm very, very proud of and something that I don't take lightly. You know, if there's ever a time in which a student athlete becomes too focused on their sport, um, we're not afraid to make that recommendation to say, you know what, the student needs to be spending some more time over in our office, and we do that. And fortunately, our coaches here, they support us in what we recommend. To talk a little bit about our tutoring program, things that go on behind the scenes. Um, people always ask me, they're like, who, who are your tutors? Where, where do you recruit them from? And it's pretty much all over Iowa City and on campus. 89% uh, of all of our active paid tutors um, have at least, at least a bachelor's degree. 28% uh, of them um, have a graduate degree. Um, and over 90% of the tutoring requests that our student athletes uh, place every single semester, they're actually matched with a particular tutor. What does that say about us? Number one, it means that we don't just wanna go out and hire just anyone as a tutor. They are very, very carefully vetted by our staff. We want to make sure that we have people in place that number one, want to 
teach our student athletes, tutor them, help them academically, and are there for the right reasons. We don't just want to bring someone in to just say, you know what, we just want you to sit there and babysit our, our student athletes. There needs to be something that's accomplished in every single tutoring session that we have with our students. Our peak hours of operation are usually between the hours of 6 and 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday evening. Why? Because it's after practice, and that's pretty much the only time that some of our student athletes have time to come in and to get in their, st their study hours. The other thing that we pay very careful attention to is we want to make sure that we're tracking and monitoring um, every single session, every single interaction that our student athletes have with a staff member within our particular office. So what we do is we train our tutors on a monthly basis. We provide them with compliance education. Uh, we also talk to them about opportunities through the Tutor Iowa program here on campus where they can go out and get some professional development opportunities. And then every single semester, they receive a performance evaluation on how they're doing. And that feedback comes directly from our student athletes and also from our staff. Um, and if there are any changes that need to be made, we make sure to tell, their, tell our tutors about that. Um, I talked a little bit earlier about identifying student athletes with special needs, and this is an area that I think is very important because much of the time when we hear about um, a national headline, and it has to do with athletics, and it has to do with the academic support services that student athletes have received, it's usually individuals who have come to campus and who probably are un underprepared quite honestly. Um, so we take a great deal of time understanding who our students are from the time that they are recruited to the University of Iowa to the time that they're admitted through the time that they're here on campus. So we have a number of assessment tools that we provide to every single student athlete, regardless of what their academic record looks like. Um, that could be a writing assessment, that could be a survey that we send to student athletes asking them, um, you know, what are their, their, their strengths and what are their weaknesses academically. We also provide um, psychoeducational testing. Uh, there may be, in some cases, student athletes who come here and we we learn that that student has some type of a learning disability of some sort. We want to make sure that we know as much as we possibly can about how that student um, can be successful. Um, we also have an academic support plan for student athletes as well. Um, that includes, it's a signed contract that our student athletes say, you know what, I agree to meeting weekly with my academic coordinator. I agree to meeting weekly with a tutor um, and also coming in and making sure that they have structured study time throughout the course of the week. So I guess the gist of this is, is that it's a very organized operation. There's a lot of eyes on our student athletes and there's a lot of expectations that we place upon them, but it's really, necessary because as we know our student athletes stay very busy trying to balance both their athletic academic and also their personal lives one of the things that I, I'll just briefly touch on here is people ask, you know, how do you track? How do you monitor? Um, and one of the tools that we um, uh, got within our office a few years back is called Grades First, and it's a really great tool. Um, our students can track their structured study hours. So if they have eight hours a week that they have to come to our office and get in hours, they can do that through Grades First. But most importantly, this is where we track um, all of our tutoring appointments. So every single tutor that comes through our door who meets with a student af athlete has to log in you know what the goals for the session were what the outcomes were the session were and also anything that that student athlete needs to do by the time that they come back to that next tutoring session and our director for retention who is actually here today John Bruno he's sitting in the front row there he goes through every single one of of those sessions and he looks through it and he talks to our coaches, he talks to our coordinators about, you know what, this particular student, they have an exam on Friday and I don't think that they've prepared for that exam yet. All of that communication is going on within our building um, and, it, and within athletics. We also send out travel notifications. So anytime a student athlete travels uh, for an away competition, we want to make sure that campus understands that they're going to be traveling for, for a competition. Um, once again, our, our faculty on campus, they look forward to seeing those notifications from us. Uh, and, and in the event a student comes up to them and says, you know, I'm competing this weekend, 
faculty are really good about saying, you know what, I haven't received my notification yet. I'll wait on that to make sure to confirm that. So great communication there. The final piece of this is do it right. Um, and this is probably um, one of the most important things that I that I remind our staff of every single day. Um, we can win all the games that we want. We can have high graduation rates, but if we are not doing things in a good ethical manner, it doesn't matter what we do. We might as well not even come to work every day. So one of the areas that I'm gonna focus on today is our Hawkeye Life program, which is a newly developed program. It's a comprehensive program. Um, and we have six pillars of this Hawkeye Life program. And one of the neat things about it is we tell our student athletes that throughout the course of their four or five year career that they're here on campus, we want them to engage in one of these six pillars every single, every single year. And they range from leadership, to community engagement, academic success, career development, health and well-being, and diversity and inclusion. One of the reasons why we have this Hawkeye Life program is during my first year here um, at the University of Iowa, um, I said, you know what, we do a lot of great things. We have a lot of programs, a lot of activities, um, but we really needed a good way of branding and marketing what we do to not only our student athletes, but also our recruits and their parents, um, and to also make sure our student athletes know that we want them to get an education outside of their sport and outside of the classroom as well. So that's why, hence, we have the Hawkeye Life program. I'm not going to go through all of these activities, but I will highlight just a few of them. Um, so at the top there, you'll see um, the label. So I'll just start with leadership. Um, ISAC, our Iowa Student Athlete Advisory Committee, that is our student leadership group. Um, it's comprised of 48 student athletes across every single sports team. They meet on a monthly basis, and they're job is really to serve as the um, liaison between the athletic administration as well as the rest of our student athlete body. They are the voice of our student athletes and we rely really heavily on you know any problems or concerns that we may have within athletics. We want to hear about them and that usually comes to the forefront within our ISAC meetings. One of the other things that they do that they're very proud of is they provide programming every year. Um, um, and later on this evening, we are having what is called our Golden Herky Award Show. You probably heard of something referred to as the ESPYs on ESPN. Well, last year, our student athletes said, you know what, we want a fun activity similar to the ESPYs where we can recognize student athletes for all of their accomplishments. Um, and so, hence, we now have the Golden Herky Award Show, which I'm proud to say is put on for student athletes by student athletes. You know, we as administrators we kind of stay to the back and and let them take the lead on it and I think what the, what they've developed is a really tremendous show community engagement is an area that I think really makes Iowa the University of Iowa and especially our athletics department stand out I've never been around a group of student athletes who are more dedicated to community service and involvement just this year alone our student athletes combined completed about 3,000 hours of community service which is a lot of hours. Uh, we have an annual day of caring, which we've had for probably about 30 some odd years. Um, and our student athletes turn out in great numbers. I think we had about 250 student athletes turn out for that this past Sunday. Um, academic success, I've talked a lot about, you know, all of the accolades that we've had over this past year. But one area that I wanted to highlight is our summer bridge program. Um, many schools in the Big Ten Conference have similar programs, and it's essentially an orientation to college life, specifically for student athletes. And so in addition to taking summer school classes, our freshmen who are here on campus during the summer, and there's about 40 of them that we usually have, um, participate in our summer bridge program. And it's a seven, there are seven different sessions. They meet with faculty on campus to talk about classroom etiquette. Uh, they also talk about developing good study strategies, checking your email, 
and my staff knows how, how big I am on this, I always tell students, you have to learn to get into good study habits, but you also have to learn how to check your emails. That's how people communicate on college campuses. We're almost there. I think they're learning. I think they're learning. Um, but anyway, our students have to go to this. It's not for credit, uh, but it's something that we require and something that our coaches also get behind as well. So it's kind of that education outside of the classroom. Uh, career development, two different programs that we've developed over the course of the past probably four years are our summer internship and job shadowing programs called Hawkeye Pace and Hawkeye Healthcare. Um, Hawkeye Pace is a job shadowing opportunity that takes place in the month of June and July. Students spend the first four weeks building their resume, learning about uh, resources and tools such as LinkedIn. Um, and then the final four weeks of the summer, they spend working one-on-one -on -one um, in an area that they have an interest in going into. Um, I think last year we had one particular student athlete go over, they had an interest in counseling, and so they went over to UCS and they spent some time over there job shadowing some of the uh, psychologists over there. Our Hawkeye Healthcare program is probably one of our longest running programs that we've had. It started out with approximately seven student athletes participating in it during the summer, and it's grown to well over 40 or 50 student athletes who are now participating in it. What's nice about it is that students who have an interest in going into a healthcare field, um, becoming a doctor, nurse, or what, what have you, uh, can go over and job shadow um, an individual over in uh, UI hospitals and clinics for the entire summer, which is a really cool thing to do. Not everyone on campus gets that opportunity. Health and well-being, this is an area that we have I would have to say we've shown tremendous support for and it's growing every single year. Uh, we are fortunate to have two staff psychologists on board within UI Athletics. Uh, we also this past year hired a new staff nutritionist. Um, and then we also have refueling stations, as I mentioned, not just over in the Jardine Athletic Learning Center, but in multiple athletic facilities on campus. What's nice about this, I wish I had this when I was an undergraduate student, uh, is to be able to go get free food, pick up on a snack in between classes. Um, and like I said, it's free for all of our student athletes. So that's a real benefit that I think our student athletes have here. The final area is diversity and inclusion. And this is an area that I help oversee, especially for our student athletes, but also for our staff members as well. For about the past uh, 40 years or so, we've had what's referred to as our multicultural focus group, uh, which initially started for minority student athletes to have a place to come um, and to talk about any concerns that they may have or things that they are dealing with as a student athlete at Iowa. It's now expanded, and I'm very proud of this point, that it's expanded to all of our student athletes who care about things like diversity and inclusion. Uh, throughout the course of the year, we probably have about seven, seven or eight programs that we put on that talk to students about you know, how to have uh, difficult conversations when you're dealing with a student athlete who is different from you or grew up different from you. Um, how to have conversations with um, with your coaches. Uh, if, if, if there's a particular coach that may not understand who you are and your ethnicity and how you grew up, how to have that conversation with them. Um, it's one area that I think is growing for our student athletes um, and I think has become more inclusive over the past year or so. So finally, how can you support UI Athletics and also Student Athlete Academic Services? I talked a lot about the Hawkeye Life Program, and to be quite honest with you, we are always looking for ways in which to engage both campus and community members in some of the activities and events that we have. The feedback that we've had from our student athletes is, A, I'm so busy, I hardly have any time to get involved on campus, or I don't feel like I know about things that are happening out in the community. And a part of our job is to bring those opportunities to our student athletes and to make them aware of what is out there. Um, and so I really challenge anyone here within this room today or on campus or in the community uh, to bring certain things, certain ideas, concepts uh, to our attention. And you can just contact me directly or, or a member of our staff. Um, 
we can only do so much throughout the course of an academic year, but certainly there are things that we can go out and promote to our student athletes at the very, very least. Student athlete scholarships. There's one myth that people have, I think, about college student athletes, and that is, well, they receive a scholarship. Well, A, not every single student athlete is here on athletic scholarship. Let's be quite honest. Um, and every single student athlete that comes here, we want them to graduate. But what we're finding is a trend that our student athletes want to stay here at Iowa. They want to continue their education. Maybe they want to go back to graduate school here. Maybe they want to earn a certificate or a minor. Um, we want to be able to provide these opportunities for our student athletes, but honestly, we need the resources and funding to be able to do that. So scholarships is a great way uh, to be able to give directly to a student athlete and to have an impact on their, on their experience here at Iowa. I put in here, attend games. <laughs> um, you know, a, a lot of times people talk about, you know, men's basketball and football and women's basketball and wrestling and, you know, all of those sports teams are, are very well attended and we want that to continue. Uh, but we have 24 sports here on campus. Um, and I'm just gonna use women's gymnastics as a great example of this, you know, to go for to a meet and to have people in the audience that aren't from the athletics department that just came out on a Friday night to go and support their team does not go unnoticed by our student athletes. Um, and it's something that, you know, we as a staff and an department, we talk about all the time. We want our student athletes to have a good positive experience, but we want people to know how hard they are competing on a day-to-day -day basis and to, and to really understand that. The other reason why this is important is because, you know, I'm proud to say we're a self-sustaining athletics department, which we're very fortunate about. Um, but there are three main areas that our revenue comes from. One is from our conference, right? The other one is from fundraising, which our fundraising staff do a tremendous job here. But the other thing is we rely very heavily on ticket sales and to put people in seats as well. Um, you know, the game of college athletics, it's changing and has changed quite a bit over the past 20, you know, 30 years. Um, and one of the things that we are very cognizant of uh, in a day when you hear student athletes talk about, I feel like we need to be paid uh, in order to participate in college athletics, is that you know none of us know what college athletics is going to look like 10, 15, 20 years from now. It may look completely different. But the one thing that we need to keep in the back of our mind is, why are student athletes here on campus at a university? And that number one reason is to get and education, and we never want to lose sight of that. But I think what we need to have a discussion about, and I know as athletic administrators, we are constantly having this conversation is, we need to keep our student athletes informed, we need to hear from them, hear what their experiences are, and to not shut them out of the process. Uh, two years ago, the NCAA um, changed, and what they said was, we want to bring the student athlete's voice kind of to the top. Um, and so now student athletes are active participants in voting on any types of NCAA legislation that goes on on a year-to-year -year basis. That's important. We need to hear from them. Um, and I think our staff do a really great job of doing that, but we also need for them to be heard at the conference level and also at the NCAA level. We also need to be having good conversations with our campus and community and recognizing that we are really all one. Athletics is not a separate entity that's just across campus and that's where all the athletes are. Um, we need to be one as a university um, because I know, just using us as an example in academic services, we rely very heavily on the faculty, staff, um, and support systems that we have here at the University of Iowa. And then finally, fostering community relationships. And this is an area that I think we can always just improve upon. Um, I am a people person. I love getting out there. I love talking about um, what we do in our office. Um, and I love meeting people. Um, and so I think that's one of the reasons why if there are ways in which we in UI athletics can, can come out um, and just be uh, more informative about who we are, what we do, um, please reach out to us. I think we're very, very approachable people over there. So um, I think we're maybe at about time. So we're going to open it up to questions that the audience may have. Yes. I actually have two questions. First is, oh. uh, 
There's there's a microphone. The difference between the graduation success rate and the federal graduation rate. And the second question is, what kind of controls and policies do the athletic department and the university have in place to avoid the sort of problems that we read about at North Carolina, for mm -hmm. example? Absolutely. Two very good questions. So I'll start with the first one. Um, about 15 years ago, the NCAA came out with what was referred to as a graduation success rate marker, okay? And essentially, this is a marker that takes into account um, some of the um, circumstances that student athletes may face as a student athlete. For example, non-student athletes, they don't go pro, right? Absolutely. And so one of the reasons for having this rate is that it takes into account student athletes who are leaving the institution for reasons other than academics, right? Some student athletes choose to transfer, similar to the general student population. However, they may be transferring for reasons that have absolutely nothing to do with the University of Iowa, may have nothing to do with the education that, that they're getting. Um, and so what the NCAA said is we are going to create our own graduation marker that more accurately reflects um, trends of graduation amongst our student athlete population. So for example, if a student athlete were to transfer into our institution and graduate from our institution, um, they would be taken into account in our graduation success rate. That student athlete, however, would not have been taken into account with the federal graduation rate, which just looks at first time freshmen receive, receiving aid within our athletics department. So that's the difference be between the two. Um, your, to your second question, how do we not become uh, a national headline? Th I'll be honest with you. This is something that keeps me up late at night, honestly. Um, I've been really fortunate, and I have to mention this, to work with some of the best people in the business here at Iowa, at Ohio State, at Kansas, um, people who have taught me um, what not to do. They've, they've taught me that. Don't do these things. You know, don't fall trapped to these, some of these pitfalls. I think some of the areas that I covered today, um, including our tutoring program, right? If there's going to be some type of an egregious violation within the athletics department and it has to do with academics, it comes down to the advisor, advisors that they have and it comes down to the tutors but it also comes down to the coaches that we have as well. Um, we do our part in terms of training both our staff and our student athletes um, on NCAA rules and regulations. So for example, we talk to them about, you know, what constitutes academic misconduct on a college campus. Um, last year, the NCAA changed um, what it termed academic misconduct. And essentially it said, if you as an athletics department are not following the rules and regulations of your institution, you are essentially not following in line with our academic misconduct policy. So what we did um, as an athletic department and worked with individuals in the provost's office, our faculty athletic reps, we came up with a policy that says any types of academic misconduct um, that occurs by a student athlete here at Iowa, number one, that student athlete is informed of that infraction. We are notified within the athletics department and our only job is to make sure sure that that student follows the policies and procedures that are outlined here at the University of Iowa. Um, and if they've broken a policy here, here at Iowa, we're hands off and there's nothing we can do about it. One of the things that we also talk to our staff about is um, documentation. We document just about every single discussion that we have with, with our student athletes and it becomes a part of their academic record. Um, we know what was said, when it was said, um, we know that when we train our staff on, if you're having a conversation with a student and something seems amiss, report it. I need to know about it, our compliance office needs to know about it, and people need to understand that there's a reporting line um, that is confidential, uh, but that 
that does need need to occur. I think at a lot of institutions where you see these um, issues and concerns come up, um, number one, there's very little faculty oversight. Here at Iowa, I'm really proud of the types of faculty oversight that we have. Our Presidential Committee on Athletics plays a very important advisory role for, for our department. Um, and Essentially, you know, if I have a problem or a concern, uh, which I never do, but if I did, I would have a group of individuals that could support me and say, you know what, we need to get back on track. We need to do something a little differently here. So that faculty interaction, I can't stress the importance of that enough. The other thing that I notice in it, in cases at other institutions um, is that athletics is separate. They see themselves as a separate entity. And it gets back to one of my last statements is, we need to learn how we can come together and to be one as an athletics department and as a university. Um, when athletics departments go off and they say, we're gonna do our own thing, that's never, that's never a good thing. So hopefully that help, helps answer your question. Yes. I have two questions. Oh, here's a, yeah. Thank you, the first one is, how do you choose the academic advisors for the athletes? And Great. do they keep them for a number of years, or is mm -hmm. it just year by year, or how does that work? Absolutely, so there is some consistency in academic advisor on a year-to-year -year basis. Um, a lot of it comes down to um, an advisor's experiences with some sports team. Um, I'll give you a great example. We have some advisors in our office who were actually student student athletes at one point in time. And so they kind of understand the ins and outs of a, a particular sports program, like baseball or softball. Um, most of the time, though, it comes down to the caseload that that athletic academic advisor has. What we want to make sure of is that we're not sticking one person with 200 some odd student athletes. We want it to be balanced amongst all of our academic coordinators. Um, obviously, when we have new staff who come on board, that obviously changes up who gets certain sports responsibilities. Um, but a part of our job is to make sure that we have a good working relationship between our office and also the coaches and the student athletes that, that they oversee. Another thing that I really look at when I'm looking at you know athletic advisors and who to pair them with um, is a lot of student athletes have a great working relationship with some athletic advisors, right? Um, and they say, you know what? I really don't want to work with this advisor. I really want to work with someone else. Well, we're understanding that, you know what? Some students, they want to go to who they want to go to. So even though we have someone who is overseeing a particular sports team, that doesn't mean that a student athlete from one sports team can't go and see an advisor from another sports team. We're very open to that. Um, and to answer your question on do we try and switch things up every few years, yes, we do. In a certain discipline, in an academic discipline. Oh, in an academic, no, we do not, not at all. It's strictly by their sports team. Mm -hmm. So so there is no connection between a student and the discipline that they're studying in, as far as an advisor is concerned. They do have an advisor, but that would be their campus advisor. Within our particular department, they, students are split up by their particular sports team. So for example, our student athlete in a sport of, I'll just say, Joe Smith. Joe Smith will have an athletic advisor within our office, right, um, who is assigned to that student sports team. But then Joe Smith will also have an advisor on campus within his or her particular major. And that person they will need to meet with on, on a regular basis. And how basis. do they hook up with that person, the well, one we, with the we, major? We require them to do that. Um, at least at least once per semester. So the general student population, sometimes they're not always required to go in and meet with their advisor all the no, time. But, but my but concern we, is, but do, they, do. do they go to the, to the department and say, I want an advisor? No. Like, like business no. school the, or chemistry no. or mathematics or something? How do, how does that, how do they how does that, that work? Person? So they are assigned an advisor. When they're admitted to the university, they're assigned an advisor within their particular discipline. Okay, and then the second question was, and you, on your page three here, you say that uh, advisors to develop and maintain updates 
for four semester plans of study. Mm -hmm. Now they're Absolutely. on campus for eight semesters. What happens to those other four semesters? Absolutely. So every single year, some majors, some students, I'll give you an example. A student may come in and they may be an open major, right? What we try and encourage our students to do is to work with their campus advisor and outline the next four semesters and classes that they need to take. Now, after those four semesters, or maybe even after two semesters, that student may come in and say, you know what, I want to change my major, or maybe I need to declare my major. So that four semester plan of study becomes null and void, and you have to start, and you have to start new. Um, every single semester, students when they go in and they meet with their advisor we ask them to bring us back documentation that says here are the classes that me and this advisor on campus have agreed for me to take and it's our job to make sure that the students are enrolling in the classes that that campus advisor has has recommended now as you can well imagine students change their minds all the time when it comes to majors and when it comes to certain classes and so they're that plan of study, that four semester plan of study, may change. Maybe it may change the next semester. Maybe they may keep that particular plan for the next four semesters. Do many of the students uh, that change their approach to classes, to uh, majors, mm -hmm. uh, have to work an extra year or so at the university in order to graduate? Not necessarily. Um, I would say um, what we tell our student athletes, because you, you have to remember this, starting a student's third year, for student athletes, they have to have a declared major of study on file at this university. Now the general student population, they may not have to declare their major after their third year, going into their third year. Student athletes do. So it's important that from day one, our student athletes at least have an idea of here are two or three different majors that I have an interest in, and to take as many, I'll just say, general education classes as they can that can go towards multiple majors on campus. So that by the time they get to that third year, they've taken courses that are degree applicable and that are going to help them graduate by that third year. And when they graduate, this means within four years, pretty basically? Absolutely. Okay, yep. thank you. Yep. Uh, one more question. Sure. All right. Now, number one, I wanted to compliment you on your day of caring last year. Nice. I was invited by Habitat for Humanity to lay 3,000 square feet of sod. <laughs> and I don't know we remember you, that, by the way. I do. Yes, yes, we and, remember uh, that. I don't know if you've ever done it, but it comes in four foot long rolls, yes. so that's seven or eight hundred rolls, mm -hmm. and it's hard on your back and it's hard on your knees. Mm. And we were fortunate enough to have about uh, 15 or so of the rowing team yep. show up at nine o'clock on a yeah. Sunday morning and help us through the duration, which took more than three hours. And uh, I was happy because I, my back was still in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're glad to help out. They yeah. are very glad to help out. And, and that's something that we're very proud of is our yeah, day of caring. I, I, it's a compliment. Well, thank you. Um, thank you. So the quest, one question I have, picking up on her question, mm -hmm. was about 10% of the kids are not finishing on time or by whatever metric you use. What, is there a pattern to what those, that group looks like? Mm -hmm. Sure. So... Um, what I have found, and maybe you all in this room can, can attest to this, is that you know it used to be that a student athlete comes in and they pick a major, they stick with that major, and then they graduate, right? The trend over the past maybe five years or so is that now student athletes and probably students in the general student population are coming in and saying, I just don't want one major. I want two majors, I want three minors, and I also want to earn my certificate program at the end of the day as well. Um, so for our student athletes, um, sometimes it does take them you know, an additional semester or an additional year in order to complete all of the requirements for those two majors and five minors and, and all of that. The other thing that we take into account is that there are a very, very, very small group of students uh, who do go on and have professional opportunities. Our goal is to get them to graduate 
and then they can go on and do that. However, not every student, student athlete does that. Um, so what we have in place for them is what's referred to as our degree completion program. We say to them, you know what, you're 10 credit hours or 15 credit hours from, from graduating, right? Go on, play your, prof do well in your professional career, sports, sports career, but then at the end of the day, we want you to come back and we want you to graduate from the University of Iowa. So what we do in our office is we stay in contact with students. Um, I have a student athlete in mind who was here a few years ago. He now plays professional football. He's probably one credit hour from graduating, right? I'm on the phone with him saying, did you finish up this last course? What can we do to, to help you finish? So we really have to stay in touch with that group of students along the way and say, where are you at? Um, and continue to remind them, here's how you can accomplish coming back and getting your degree. All right. I All right. We are just at time, and I know some of you might have a few more questions, so I think Liz is going to stick around for a few more minutes, um, and then we're going to head over to Jardine for a tour that starts at 1.30 if anyone wants to join us. Okay. Thank you. And thank you so much, thank Dr. Tover.